Machines are normal in our everyday lives, in particular rotating machines. Rotating machines can perform tasks as simple as keeping time or circulating air to tasks as complex as locomotion in a car or an airplane or even the conversion of wind or hydropower to electrical energy. As technology advances, we are able to make machines both smaller and much more powerful than ever before. In modern technology, or in particular the computer industry, there's a real drive to make devices even smaller than they currently are. And this means the individual parts of these machines will have to be extremely small. And this has given rise to a new field called nanoscience or nanotechnology. It is this field that has captured our attention in the Sykes Group at Tufts University. One of the goals of nanoscience is to use individual molecules to make all types of common devices using the motion and the, say, electrical conductance of individual molecules. And as chemists, this would be fantastic because over the last 100 years, organic chemistry has found ways of making all these different types of molecules in high yields and really precise engineering at the molecular scale. In nanotechnology, the idea is that you can make parts of machines out of individual molecules. In our lab, we use a very powerful microscope called a scanning tunneling microscope to help determine if this is possible. Let's have Aaron explain how STM works. Here we see an atomically sharp tip is brought within a few nanometers of a conductive surface. If a voltage is applied between the tip and the surface, electrons will tunnel between the two. This electron tunneling creates a current which is exponentially related to the tip surface separation. This means that even small changes in the tip surface separation will create large changes in the observable tunneling current. And it is these changes in the tunneling current that we monitor and ultimately give us a picture of the surface under investigation. The STM described previously is housed in an ultra high vacuum chamber. This is important in order to keep the surfaces very clean and to have extreme confidence in the identity of the molecules dosed onto the surfaces. Furthermore, this STM is capable of low temperature scanning at both 5 and 78 Kelvin. 5 Kelvin temperatures are achieved via liquid helium and 78 Kelvin temperatures with liquid nitrogen. It is important that the system is enabled to do low temperature scanning so that we are able to slow down the movement of individual atoms and molecules so that we can monitor their motion. Now let's find out how we use STM to study rotating molecules to determine if we can use them as tiny machines. We can use bioethers to study the fundamentals of molecular rotation. Bioethers are molecules that have a central sulfur atom surrounded by two carbon chains. And when we put these bioether molecules onto a gold surface, there's a strong interaction between the gold and the central sulfur atom that anchors the molecule to the surface. So the carbon chains are free to rotate around the gold sulfur bond. At 80 Kelvin, the thioether molecules are rotating much faster than our scanning rate using the STM. So these molecules that are rotating appear hexagonal in shape or shaped like flowers. In the same way that cars and windmills require an external source of energy in order to function properly, our molecules require a source of energy in order to rotate, and we can use heat as a source of energy. Molecules with very short carbon chains will begin to rotate at very low temperatures as shown here. If we increase the surface temperature only slightly, we see that the longer chain molecules will begin to ratchet between two distinct orientations on the surface. And if we increase the surface temperature even further, all of the molecules are rotating, and this gives rise to their flower-like appearance. So as we increase the temperature of the surface, we see the onset of rotation and an increase in the rotation rate of the thioether molecules. We can also use the STM tip to measure the rate of rotation as these molecules are spinning at low temperatures. From this, we can make an Arrhenius plot and then we can calculate the activation energy or the energy barrier for rotation of the molecules when anchored to a metal surface. We can even mechanically control the motion of our rotors by controlling the spacing between 
individual rotating molecules. If two rotors are pushed too close together, they stop rotating. You can imagine if two wind turbines were built too close together, that the spinning blades would get in each other's way and their rotation would be hindered or possibly halted completely. I mentioned that we could use heat to drive molecular rotation, but Heather can explain why this may not be the best approach. This rotational motion that we can get from heat is random and uncontrollable. Specifically, the laws of physics tell us that we actually cannot get useful work from heat. Imagine if the wheels in your car turned uncontrollably and equally forward and backward. The driver would end up in the same place as they started. Another option to drive the rotation of our molecules is to use the electrical current coming from the STM tip. By using the scanning tunneling microscope, we can turn the rotation of these molecules on and off almost as easily as flipping a switch. Our current task is a very complicated one and involves determining if we can control which direction our molecules spin. All of this is done in an effort to answer a single fundamental question. We essentially make a single molecule electric motor out of a single molecule.